Um, all right, it's the last talk, so I'll be quick, quicker. Um, so what I want to talk about is this. It's open science with open data on the open web using open source. Um, but that's just because I knew that the real title would never get accepted. Um, spreadsheets. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. It's, it's fine. So what, uh, what I want to present today is the collaboration between three really cool projects, um, some of which you've heard before uh, in this conference, and that's Stencilla and Substance, and one that I'll present uh, anew, and that's PubSuite. Um, so we'll go through each of these uh, individually to just explain what they are and how, how we work together um, as a team. No, 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 it's about spreadsheets. <laughs> nice. Um, so a spreadsheet is an interactive <laughs> computer application for organization, analysis, and storage of data. Should I go on? Okay. Um, so what is Coco? Oh, did you, did you miss that one? Uh, I'll have the slides after the talk, so if you can um, ask questions. So Coco. Um, Coco is the organization that I'm presenting here today, and that's the Collaborative Knowledge Foundation. Uh, we call it Coco for short, even though it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's COCO for us because that was the easiest to pronounce. Um, COCO Foundation is a new foundation. Uh, it's about, hmm, Adam, six, seven months old? Yeah. Um, and we just recently got um, a fine amount of funding from the Moore Foundation, and we've been initially sponsored by the Shuttleworth Foundation, so we really want to thank them uh, to making, for making COCO possible. It's, uh, I really liked how Jeremy before gave pictures of people I think that's important, like to connect the people to the projects. So I, in the last minute, I added that. Um, I didn't have the foresight to do it before, but I added it after Jeremy's talk. Um, so COCO was founded by Adam Hyde and Kristen Rattan. And Adam Hyde uh, had several projects in the open source uh, space before, and in the activism uh, around knowledge production. So things like Book Sprints is a, is a company that he founded, where you uh, basically write a book with a group of people in a week. Um, and Kristen Rattan is a publisher, or was a publisher for PLOS uh, as her last position, um, and then decided to, uh, fund, to found uh, COCO. Um, so COCO is working on this project called PubSuite. And what is PubSuite? Um, PubSuite is this project for, is this a framework where you put together components for knowledge production. So for, say, for example, you wanted to have a science blogger. Like, nothing like that exists. That's really funny. Like, there is no blogging application out there where you would be able to add equations, add references, add figures, and present that in a scientific way. It just doesn't exist. That's funny. So that's, that's one of the things you could do with PubSuite. It's, for example, you take the text editor, you take the post editor, you take the user's manager components, and you bring them together to form a science blogger. And then there are other applications that you can build with PubSuite. It's for a lot of the applications in the knowledge production um, sphere that we want you as the community for COCO to build. Uh, and we'll help you along the way and we'll present the best examples. So for example, the first thing that we're building is Science Blogger. Then we're building a book production system. Um, all of this is based in open source. Um, we are very open to the way we run our meetings, to where our source code is, where we chat. It's, everything is open. So anyone who feels the need to form some kind of knowledge production system. Just come talk to us and we'll walk you through it and we'll help you along the way. Because I think there's a lot of people who want specific things to work in a specific way and they don't have any support in doing that. So if you, if you want that, come to us. We'll help you. Um, this is uh, how PubSuite looks right now. And it's just a, a, a mock-up. We have an actual demo and it's nowhere near as pretty as this. This is, this is just pretty. Um, and it's based on the work that our uh, UX designer has started working on since about two weeks ago. So she's very new on the project. So things will improve in UX wise. But right now, this is well, how we want PubSuite to look. Um, this is, for example, is a science blog. You have a list, it's very simple. Like that's the whole thing. Like why doesn't this exist yet? You have a list of posts, you can edit them, you have a list of users, you can add permissions to them. You can say, hey, user X, you're a contributor. You can create a new blog post. Hey, user Y, you're an admin. You control everything. That's it. 
there's no magic there. Um, but all of these components are individually developed and they come together in this whole. So the user's manager is developed individually. The post manager is developed individually. And you bring these together to form a, a whole system. Um, so I haven't talked about the other parts of the project. That's substance. So what is substance? The two developers of substance are sitting there in the back. If you could raise your hand. There you go, Michael and Oliver, superstars. Um, they're working on a web-based text editor. Um, and they've been doing that for the last four years? Four? Six, six years. Yeah. Uh, so it has, it went through a lot of the, the initial pains that a text editor on the web would have, and they've gone through that. So if you, if you want to use prose mirror, don't. No, right, just use Substance. Substance went through all of this. Um, if, if you know a bit about how text editing works on, in the browser, it's very uh, fraught with differences between browsers and cross-browser cross compatibility, and some things work weirdly in its own browser and the other. And Substance went through that, and they produced a lot of uh, very cool, final, production-ready, text editor-based um, products. So you can follow them on Substance, and their Substance I always do a page. Uh, oh, there you go, there they are. Michael and Oliver, putting the people to the project again. Um, and then the last part of the project, uh, the collaboration, is Stencilla. Uh, and Stencilla is data-driven documents. Some of you were at the previous talk where Mike and Oliver gave a demonstration of what this Stencilla is. It's basically uh, this um, templating language where you can include R code and run it in a browser context. And then it has two parts. It has a sheet and a stencil. And I'll demo all of that a bit later so you, you get a good idea of what Stencilla is. And it's made by this um, guy from New Zealand. This is a common team. We have a few people from New Zealand, actually. Uh, I don't know what it is about that place, but uh, it inspires something uh, in people. So Nakomi is working on Stencilla. Um, and uh, he's been working on this alone. And he, I think, just recently uh, got a lot of attention by being on top of Hack News. And people are recognizing the effort that he put into making this, uh, this project. So I think things will pick up in terms of who the contributors are. So if you, if you feel like you could contribute, uh, do, do check him out and reach out to him. He's very friendly. Um, so demo time. Hopefully my everything is, wow. Wow. But that's never happened before. It's a good sign. That's a good, it's it's going to go well. Um, OK, so first I want to demo an initial configuration of Pop Suite, and that's the science blogger. So just quickly, you create a new blog post. So this would be a separate component. What you see now is the post manager. You create it. Ah. Hmm. OK. Demos. I love demos. All right. OK, so you create it. You go into the editor and uh, enter some abstract, enter a title. Uh, and then the fun part begins when you want to add references. So you can search Crossref and you can say uh, cats and dogs. I think that's a common theme here. Uh, you search for cats and dogs. And now it goes out to the Crossref API. And if internet works, hopefully, come on, internet. Come on, come on. Uh, OK. Well, that's a bummer. I'll try that again. Ah, there we go. Uh, supplemental information. That's, that's pretty um, OK for the query that I put in. CSV, that makes sense. Um, so you add the reference, and then in your uh, in the paper or in the blog post that you're writing, you can insert a citation. You say, uh, I'm citing this supplemental information, and the references build automatically, and the whole site proc is in there. Like the, the, the metadata that, that is the reference is in the, in the document. And then you can go further. So you can say, um, oh, I want to insert a figure. Um, so you say, insert figure. Um, hieroglyphic peppers. Well, that's an interesting one. 
Um, so spreadsheet, 4,000 years old. Um, you title it. Wow, that's a great typo. Um, and then when you, when, again, when you're ent entering the text, you can say uh, referencing da 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 da, and you say cite the figure, and you cite the figure, and again, this figure is cited. And then you save this, go to posts, you publish it, you go to, uh, to the main page, to the landing page, um, and you see this post, like I say, this, we just started working with a UX person, so please forgive the brutalist look. Um, <laughs> but if you click read more, you get the, the entire paper in an eLife lens kind of reader. So this is a substance reader. And this is basically what you need for scientific blogging. This is, that's it. There's, there's nothing more that you would want. Like the, so this is version 0 0.2. And in 0 0.3, I think the one thing that people still miss is uh, collaborative editing, and that's real-time collaborative editing. So you, two people can write on the same blog post at the same time, and that's courtesy of, of Substance, who worked on the, the back end, the OT transformation that made that possible. So that's the Science Blogger demo. And then we have the Sheets demo. So Sheets would be the Stencilla Sheets. I will just bear with me. So you create a new, new sheet, you edit it, and that's the spreadsheet. So you go, uh, da, da, da. this is backed by R, right? So I can, I can do things like A1, A3, B1, B3, boom. And I have the plot that's coming from R. And what is more, I can then take, I can take this address. Right now it's, it's a bit rudimentary, but I can take this address. I can create a new stencil, which would be the, the blog post-like scientific document. I say, create it, edit it, and I say, well, hello there. And I say, uh, paste the address, select B4. Sorry that the interface broke with the low resolution, but here we go. Ah, okay, it's not gonna work, because the, the interface broke because the resolution is too small. But um, you would select this and you would say, insert and it would go to the stencilla to the stencilla sheets and get that figure and if you change any of the parameters when the figure was generated it would update here so you can imagine this you have some simple analysis going in the sheets spreadsheets are something that people are really used to working with um, so you would have something simple in there uh, do some R statistics and then create a figure include it in the blog post and if you change anything in the analysis the figure will automatically update um, so that's the sheets then one. There are some, if you go to stency.la, you have the, like, the real spreadsheets with real analysis as demos of what you can do with, with this platform. Um, so then, so that's, that's the demos. But then I had a really good idea yesterday. Like, it was amazing. So imagine that you could follow the feed of DOIs minted in real time. And Joe's smiling because he knows we had that discussion. Uh, but minted DOIs or newly created DOIs is is a signal of where papers are published, right? So if you, if you could look at that and geolocate the affiliations, you could know where science is coming from. And if you plot that on the globe, you'd have this real-time map. I think DOIs are like 20,000 a day or something like that. So you'd have a real-time map every few seconds of where science is happening. And I was like, that's so cool, I should do that. And I tried, and I came up with this. It spins. And I think there's, there's maybe, there's, there's one dot somewhere. So imagine that this is a real-time view of the scientific output of the human race. <laughs> but with dots. <laughs> dots are not But if they were, if they were, when you, when somebody publishes a paper, that's usually the end of life in terms of how the paper will change. Usually the publication of a paper is the final step. There's nothing beyond <coughs> the publication of a paper. Compare that to open source. When you publish your project, there's the dot, somewhere in Russia. Uh, when you publish an open source project, that's when its life begins. And this is something that we at Coco want to bring into science. We want it to be okay to send a typo correction to one of the leading experts in neuroscience. That should be fine. You shouldn't feel like you're insulting the man. Like, if I, if I look at my open source contributions, a lot of them is like, hey, 
There's a typo in your readme. And then the person says, thank you. And it's so amazing. We should do that in science. Um, and this is something that we at Co Coco at least hope to build the tools for, um, because it's also a social problem. And we want the world to look like this, connected. So the world of science, not just like dots, isolated dots on the globe, but connected dots, things like people improving others, other people's paper, even if that's like just a single line or a typo, or just like, oh, you misspelled your name, or some silly thing like that. It should be a collaborative effort that doesn't stop with just an isolated publication somewhere in Russia. That's it. And this is just a quote from uh, Marcus, which I think resonates with how open source works. It, why, why do we contribute to open source projects, those of, those of us, uh, us who do? What drives you to make that typo change? What drives you to update the package JSON of some module somewhere? I think, it's, I think you get something from it and, it, and we're made to help each other. That seems weird, but if you do a lot of it, you, you kind of get into that mode of helping others, and it's really nice. If we could do that in science, that'd be great. And that's the, really the end. Thanks. <laughs>
anyone who deals with, with the collaborative generation of knowledge, which I think is almost the entire web. Like one of the cool uh, things we imagined is, uh, is, you know, XKCD, the comic? There's an XKCD editor that you can create your own comic. And if we plug that into as a component, into Pub Suite, we can have, everyone can have an XKCD comic. That would be great. And it's not entirely related to science, it's not related to book production, it's just something that generates knowledge and it's something that we'd like to support. Mm, I wonder, like, when your, your target audience are science bloggers, they often use WordPress. So, how do you get them to use your tool? Um, because they have to then, they publish on WordPress and would go back and have to somehow import it again to WordPress. Mm. So how do you manage that? So I, I think the, the back and forth between WordPress is not in our scope right now. Uh, the, the, what we would be more concerned with is how do you get people out of WordPress into PubSuite? And this is something we haven't handled yet. And actually we, uh, we haven't talked to a lot of people that would be using WordPress. So if you know people who are using WordPress to publish scientific content, that would be great if you could like connect us. Yes, this, is, this is the users that we're looking for, to ask them what, what they need. Mark? Uh, just to support you, I have spent some time writing plugins for WordPress to do things like citations, but I think that's just something you can do, but I think having a fresh start and doing things like you do is a much better way forward. Uh, WordPress is a, is a huge platform for many things. It, uh, it's, it's possible to do that, but it's, it's not the only way. To take blogging means WordPress, I think, is really short sighted. Mm. Especially because, like, the next step will be the short of the show is that you have sort of literal programming. You have code that's executed when figures are generated, when you publish the blog post, and then you get in the territory where WordPress and hosted websites is just can't get there. Yeah. So, you can do the first time, and then it's just messy. Yeah. Oliver? Yeah, just one more to comment on that. Uh, I think it was misleading just to put the science and blogging use case in the, in the center. You know, also that it is a, the time to create a full fledged publishing system where you have editorial processes, branding processes, everything mm -hmm. managed, no workflow management. It's uh, uh, way more complicated now than sometimes than just blogging. And blogging is one. Right, so pub, one of the use cases for PubSuite, of course, is a journal platform. So you'd have a component for workflow management, you would have a component for users, uh, you would have a component for editors and so forth, and you'd put this together and form a, a journal platform. I mean, that's basically our main use case. It's the, that's maybe why I didn't mention it, because this is the yeah. thing that, that we really want to do. And this is maybe a follow-up to Oliver's comment, um, but I see a huge potential to take this to the classroom and mm -hmm. like, use classrooms as a test bed, especially, you know, students are submitting work where they have to make references and mm -hmm. things are automatically formatted and it sort of takes away that complexity of like just really bad formatted um, submissions of papers. Um, you have like Scintilla where you could actually do like run R code for in a spreadsheet for people who are both from who are or just using spreadsheets. So um, I would say like if there's like training documentation or anything that um, educators could use and bring that into the classroom. Like, I think that would be like a huge way to get usership and that's, that's an awesome start idea. that early, you know, convince them that this is a, a way to go. Cool. It's a cool idea. Thanks. All right. Thank you.